What is going on, community? It is TJ, aka Flash by Night, and we are back here keeping up with the comics. And today we have a trio of comics to keep up with. So go ahead, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and the notification bell so we can kick it off. Because today we are keeping up with Black Manta issue number one. Uh, written by Chuck Brown, who, if I'm not mistaken, is the author of uh, Bitter Roots. So, first of all, I know little to nothing about Black Matter. The first time I, I encountered Black Matter, or Aquaman for that matter, is the Aquaman movie. So, of course, I don't have a whole lot to go on uh, for my reading experience. But I wanted to jump in for some strange reason and read this book and see what it has in store. And it was pretty entertaining. We have uh, we had a we started off with a family that's above a ship that's being taken over by pirates. And we had Black Manta basically come and save that family, but not for that family's sake. He was looking for something uh, that we get, we get to know, but we don't know a whole lot of secrets about. And so the, the, the story itself is kind of about, it's about Black Matter kind of figuring out what his legacy is going to be. Is he going to end up being super villain? Is he gonna end up being a side character, small person in history or whatever? How is he going to be seen throughout the DC universe? That, those are kind of the questions that he's trying to answer throughout the book. Alongside a little bit of action where he's trying to find uh, this orb and trying to um, basically resurrect someone or something. I don't know why. It doesn't really say. Uh, he again kind of says that you know what what he resurrects is going to basically basically go on his on his life resume whatever this is good or bad it's going to it's going to reflect on him but he's going through it anyway so we'll see what happens you know later on what this is he unleashed but what i want to know for anybody that reads or knows anything about black matter has black matter always been able to either do or copy magic like he says here when he, he's he's kind of going to his lair he says that he can kind of uh copy the uh the magic users you know manipulating harmonics or whatever to 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 get into pocket universes or how the however he explains it but he figures out how to use magic in this book to go back and forth. Um, it's not a really big deal in the book, but I was interested uh, in the fact that he knows how to use some form of magic, small as it may be. But Black Manta number one in the end was not a bad book. Uh, I'm definitely going to uh, try out issue number two because he does end up unleashing whatever this is that he wants to unleash. And I want to see what comes of that. Uh, also, I want to see what comes of his kind of self-discovery of who he is and what he's going to become and how he's going to be seen in the DC universe going forward. So that's Black Manta issue number one. Um, yeah, it wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. Masters of the Universe, issue number three, uh, written by Kevin Smith and Tim Sheridan. Of course, this is part three of the four-part prequel to the Netflix series. Of course, make of it what you will. I feel like I, I feel like it's an obligation to do that since the Netflix show was such a hot button topic. Uh, but issue number three is basically about the origins of Eva Lynn. Like issue number two. Uh, went over the origins of Skeletor and here we get the origin of Evelyn, which I would have never guessed it kind of it kind of does the whole uh, nobody's evil nobody's born evil you know life kind of makes them that way and so 
we start off with Lynn being a little girl raised by God parents or or uh, worse. I'm going to call it worse. If you ever if you check this book out, you'll figure out who these people are. But she's basically raised by people that are going to eat her sometime soon. I don't know what that is, but I know if you want to start a kid off and make a kid who was good grow up evil, try to eat that kid and let her live. So that's what happens here. She kind of runs away and runs into a sewer and runs into this older lady who knows magic. Of course, that's where we're going to go. And the older lady kind of shows her you know, how to do magic and everything. But she gives her rules. She's like, if you do magic, if I'm going to show you magic, you have to use your magic for good. You can't use your magic for evil. Yada, yada, yada. We all know where this is going. And sooner or later, she, of course, encounters Skeletor. And Skeletor kind of, you know, enchants her you know, tells her all the nice things she didn't hear growing up and she turns against the lady and turns to evil and the rest of it is kind of the history that we all know she goes with Skeletor um, Skeletor wants to overthrow Hordak which may actually not be the history we all know because that I believe there's some conflicting history between this and other stories but Skeletor wants to overthrow Hordak and he is going to take Evelyn with him. And that's kind of what this book is. Of course, you know, if you've kept up with the whole story, there is this creature. Uh, it's not the Lorax because that's a that's a Dr. Seuss thing. But there's this creature who attacked uh, who, who attacked the uh, the royal palace and who the sorceress has a psychic link to right now and Evelyn has told Skeletor that she can't get into the creature's head if the sorceress the sorceress is in there but we kind of know that Evelyn is not telling the truth but that's kind of that's kind of part of the overall story not really a big part of this book but Masters of the Universe Revelations issue number three origin story of Evelyn it was okay um I won't say it was great I won't say if if this wasn't a a four part story and b a prequel to the Netflix show. I won't say I would be reading this, but since those two elements exist and I only have one book left to go, I'm gonna pick up number four. Uh, if you want to pick, I don't know if they have this in the trade by the time number four drops, but I assume that this may end up being in a trade. And it's not a bad read. It's not. It's not great, but it's not a bad read. But this is Revelations, Masters of the Universe, Revelations, issue number three. Bunny Mask, issue number three. Uh, this is a weird book, and I am strangely compelled to keep reading it. So Bunny Mask is uh, about, or circles around, this primary character, Tyler. Um, getting stuck in a cave when he was a young police officer uh his partner was killed and uh he's down in this cave with this girl and her father and her father's following this voice he hears in the cave he calls the voice the snitch and we all think the father's crazy and the father is telling him to dig this hole and holding him at gunpoint and so he kind of digs the hole and everything. And then out of nowhere, this girl, female with a bunny mask on, goes on a short murder spree and springs Tyler and he gets out. He's telling cops about what happened and, and they have no recollection of any of it. And then he kind of moves forward with his life. They fast forward about 10 15 years or so this has scared him so much that he's a doctor now yes he changed whole careers because of his bunny mask encounter in this cave 
But since then, he's been seeing Bunny Mask on his up uh, on his his in his office on his wall. Uh, Bunny Mask that weren't there end up being there. And wait a minute, wait. Was that back there before? I don't remember a bunny mask being back there before. Y'all do me a favor. Watch out for that uh, that uh, bunny mask character. She's in a picture frame. Make sure she stays there. But getting back to the story, Dr. Tyler, now A has a roommate who is kind of important to the story a little bit. And B runs into this character named B, B E E, who happens to be the little girl he encountered in the cave. I mean, so he's been dating, well, not really dating, he's been seeing this character, uh, B, uh, and they've been hanging around, paddling around, but he hadn't brought himself to be able to, you know, get any closer to her than just Plutonic friends. Which is really driving his roommate crazy because his roommate's like, look, date her, do something. And even B after a while is like, do I have to, do I have to drop hints? Do I have to tell you outright what we should be doing? Because it's, it's a, it's a, it's a whole thing. It's a crazy book. People smoke crazy strains of weed in this book. Things happen. You can't explain. And then Tyler walks around hearing voices and he thinks he's crazy but what he finds out that is that these voices that he's hearing, these voices that are telling him things are the snitch, the voice from the cave. Uh, it's, it, it's telling him about different people, telling him everybody around him, telling him them, telling him their deepest, darkest secrets and whatever. And nobody knows why. He meets up with this other sheriff who also ended up down in the cave one way or another because this cave is supernatural. Like you can be in your house at one point and then next thing you know, you wake up and you're in the cave. I don't know why. Like I said, this is a crazy story. I'm just compelled to read it and compelled to pick up these books even if I don't understand some of it. I, it may be the bunny mask thing that's drawing me in. But what they, what we, what he finds out and what we already know as the reader from issue one is that the bee that was down in the cave, her body is still down in the cave. So who is this bee that Tyler's been hanging out with? Nobody knows. Why is the snitch? telling Tyler everybody's secrets and telling Tyler things that'll save his life. Nobody knows. And who is this bunny mask character that Tyler actually actually talks to? And why, why is he and bunny mask that close? I don't know. All of these questions are in this book. Half of them make sense. Half of them don't. But I am compelled to keep reading the book because Bunny Mask is drawing me in. So that's Bunny Mask, issue number three. Uh, like I said, there are probably people smarter than me that can make more heads or tails of what's going on in this book. And it probably makes a lot more sense than it does to me. But I'm still going to read it. I don't. Th I think it's like a four or five issue uh, series, and we're on issue three. And I'm still intrigued by the mystery of the bunny mask. I think that's it. If you just give me a mystery in a book, uh, uh, and and give it a nice, cute name like bunny mask, I'll buy your book. I think that's what it is. They've got me. But bunny mask number three is pretty interesting. The 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 series is interesting even if it's outsmarted me a couple of times, but I will keep on picking it up. And that was Keeping Up With The Comics. I hope you saw something you liked. I hope you enjoyed yourself. If you did enjoy yourself, go ahead, hit that like button, 
And if you want to keep up with me, keep it up with the comics, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. And of all, as always, feel free to leave comments. But as we always do at this time, love yourself, love others, and I will be back in a flash.